The day Sammy was born was probably the happiest day of my life. I don't think I have ever uh, felt that joy, except with my other two children, Ashley and Blake. But it was the first time that I had ever felt such unconditional love. She was uh, born jaundice, however, and she had to go back into the hospital after we had gotten her home, and she had to go into the uh, phototherapy for a while, and then afterwards, when she used the photo, her Billy Rubin came down, we were able to take her home, but we had to have her exposed to sun and then take her into the lab at the hospital to have heel sticks done to check that Billy uh, Rubin level. And it was in the going back and forth that she picked up a form of the chickenpox virus that um, ultimately caused global devastation of her brain. Because she would be in a vegetative state that they recommended that, that she be removed from life support. So we put her in her pajamas and we held her with just one doctor. She had a little oxygen at the uh, coming out of a little Dixie cup in front of her face. And we sat there with a very wise doctor who said, told us, he said, it's not how long we live, it's how abundantly we live that life. And that kind of really, you know, sunk in with me and, you know, we're trying to to figure out how is this happening? It, it, it's almost like you're in a play. This is not your life. This is not happening. So we sat there waiting for Sammy to take her last breath, and she decided, no, I've got a journey to take. I've got lessons to teach people, and I am not giving up. And she beat all the odds and lived to be 27. You couldn't meet Sam without feeling some kind of emotion where I can walk by somebody in the mall and they'll never notice me and I'll have no effect on them. But if you walked by Sam, you had to feel something. So I always felt as though it, it was our responsibility to help Sammy on her journey and her mission which I think she and God figured out before she came down here, and that that this was all all about reaching out to other people and seeing how someone with so little could be so vibrant and so full of of uh, the joie de vie. It was always about her journey with God. It was always about what she presented to us. As, as part of what we needed to accomplish in our lives and what we needed to learn in our lives. And I just, I just never doubted that, that, that God was there watching over all of this. In January, I, I was in the grocery store and a neighbor said to me, how's Sam doing? And I, I <laughs> burst into tears, which I do randomly. I said, I think I'm losing her. And so January, I, I could see that she wasn't herself anymore. And I kind of held her in my arms like this, put my hand on her heart because I didn't want anything to happen and me miss, miss it. So I was holding her just like, held her all my life, from my arms to God's. We have no regrets. I mean, a lot of people have, you know, I could have, could have done this, could have done that. And, and maybe we could have. Should we have done this with Sam? You know, uh, I mean, there, there's no operate, you know, we, we tried, you know, we did everything medically we could for her humanly possible, and we tried to give her the fullest life we could. No regrets. No guilt, no regrets. We just miss her. Just being thankful and just really sad. We just miss her. We're moving on, but knowing darn well, just 
want to embrace life, but absolutely fearless about about what's beyond and so looking forward to seeing her again that that it kind of make, makes life like so acceptable on its on life's own terms